Our first reading this morning is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 26. When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and you, you shall put it in a basket. And sh you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to him to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at the time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid us on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction and our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before <coughs> the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite, and the sojourner who is amongst you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Who oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, the epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the Lord is the same Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Correct, that's the fourth chapter. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this, this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all kinds of the kingdoms of the world 
in a moment of time and said to him, to you, I will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me. And I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will be all yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to test. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is the gospel is read. Did you hear the words of Jesus in that text? Did you see the human son of God using his human abilities, answering and doing the things that, well, everybody else seems to fail at. You know, Jesus was led into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Kind of recalls for us, Moses going to the, receive the commandments, uh, 40 years for the children of Israel to plow through the desert, and finally the last uh, had passed on so that the new generation might go into the promised land. 40 days. At the end of the 40 days, Jesus is hungry. Yeah. That's to say it mildly. At the end of 40 days, his body is screaming at him, me, feed me or I'm going to die. And here you have the devil saying, here, make us some bread. Jesus certainly could have done that. But you see, he never used his power for himself. He does those things we do, but he does them perfectly without sin. You know, I'm amazed at the this story recorded in the scriptures, and it's, it's recorded in all, all the synoptic gospels. And the, what is said is so important that, well, one of the lessons that we should learn from it is that the devil knows how to quote scripture, that he knows scripture, but he twists it to his own advantage. And those devil inspired religions that are out there that twist the word of God, they're doing the same thing. And little do they realize that that's putting God to the test. That that's only gonna lead them to eternal punishment. You know, what Jesus went through, he went through for you and me. And he went through the, the pillars of uh, society, if you would. Uh, he, he goes concerning food. The temptation, even the beginning temptation where Adam and Eve failed. And Jesus becomes the second Adam, the one who walks perfectly in front of our Lord and Savior, uh, in front of God the Father. Satisfying him with the way in which he lives his life as a human being. And then he goes on through this 
selling all the kingdoms of the world. You know, all the power and the glory of the world is uh, what most human beings crave for. And the temptation is real. You know, I'd like to stress something. When you read this or you read anything about this in the other commentaries and the like, I don't think a lot of them take God's word to heart. That they, they don't really get to the point of what God is speaking here. Worship God. Him only shall you serve. That includes the idol, the most common idol in all the world. It's got a one letter and it identifies you. I. If everything is for me, and if my life is directed for me, then I have failed God. For I'm to love my neighbor as myself, it means that I have to love my neighbor as much as I love me. And that's not going to happen unless I love God. And the only way that I can truly love God is if I know that he has forgiven me. And therefore, I have forgiveness to give to others. You know, the final temptation Jesus on the temple, up on the parapet, and the misquote of scripture. He says, jump down. And the psalm reads just about exactly what the words of God have said. But number one, this is a dare. But number two, Jesus is not going to take the easy way not going to take the devil's way of having power and glory. You see, he's thinking that they're up on the temple prayer, and it's probably prayer hour. And if he jumps and he just kind of floats down in front of them all, you know, that uh, will win them all over and they'll know that he's the Messiah and there's no need for a cross, no need for death. You know? That's a shortcut that was certainly offered to him. And then finally, when the devil leaves, he leaves for a more opportune time. And he'll be back in the story, which is more than just a story. It is history. It is recorded fact. And he will tempt Jesus. And Jesus will overcome and he will die on a cross for your sins and mine. Think that about think about that for just a minute. He's going to die for your sins and mine. And he did that willingly. He didn't take any shortcuts. Why? It certainly would have been human to do so. Well, sinful humans would have done so. But Jesus is well-pleasing in God's sight. He does the things that his father wants him to do. And it takes you all the way back to John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world is you and me. And we're saved by trusting in Christ. Not in ourselves, not in our strength. And over time, if you get more time on you, you will understand that the blessing of strength now is something that will leave you later and you will learn to rely more and more on God. Our whole life is learning to trust God, to trust his word, to trust his way, 
to come to the point where we understand what Job said when he says, though he slay me, I will trust him. His word is true. People will try to confuse that. And there was a period of time when the, the skeptics and the like really had the top hand and have really led us in society to a point today where there are those who do believe in Christ and are spiritual. And there are those who completely deny God and everything else. Well, as they deny God and everything else and make themselves God, they come to learn that they too die. And it is because of Christ that we have eternal life. It is because he fulfilled everything that we couldn't do. He lived his life without sin. He loved his neighbors, his friends. He loved his enemies and did good to those who hurt him. Yes, yeah, so this whole episode that is recorded in all three Gospels is recorded for a reason in all three Gospels. So we understand that that's like cement. It's solid. And what happened, happened. Now, people will come up with ideas about, well, how did he do this? Or how did he do that? Read the text. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Understand the text says that God loves you, that Jesus Christ lived the life of the second Adam that take away our sins. And it was his purpose to save us from ourselves. And he did that. He accomplished that. Let his spirit work in your heart. You stay in God's word, not in man's thoughts. Amen. The peace of God, the path of all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith until life everlasting. Let us depart in his peace. Amen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sing a portion, a portrait song, verses. What shall I enter? Off the door. Are you privileged to this contribute to our Lord's ministry by sending your offering in support of God's ministry at St. John's and Church? And that's address and also another way of paying the PayPal and our website for our mission here and our site. And now we come.